Imagine a data set that is an elongated cloud of points like this one. This data set is two dimensional defined by two variables x1 and x2. What if we wanted to reduce its dimensionality down to one dimension? What would be the best way to represent this cloud of points by just one variable, eta1? Well, if we performed principal component analysis on this data set, we would find this direction as the best one dimensional subspace. This is simply because PCA finds subspaces as directions of the largest variance in the data. We could then project all of those points onto this one dimensional line. But what if we also have a specific quantity of interest that we would like to be well represented over the low dimensional projection? Let's say that our QOI when plotted over the original data set looks like this. If we projected the data set onto a subspace found by PCA, the pink data points corresponding to the lowest QOI value would land right on top of the dark blue data points corresponding to the highest QOI value. In other words, this PCA subspace will not preserve any information about the QOI's gradient after projection. And this will generate non-uniqueness in how a QOI is defined over the projection and can pose serious problems in reduced order modeling. So can we do better? Can we inform low dimensional data projections by arbitrary quantities of interest such that they are represented uniquely over the projection? And specifically, can we achieve that for QOIs that were not within the original data set or maybe even ones whose very definition depends on the projection operator. For this particular QOI that I visualize here, a much better one-dimensional subspace will be this one. After collapsing all data points onto this one-dimensional line, all pink points land on top of each other on one side of the projection, and all dark blue points land together on the other side of the projection. Such subspace preserves gradient information in a QOI after projection. So how can we inform projections by quantities of interest? And instead of using PCA, we can focus on an encoder decoder, which is a special type of an artificial neural network with this architecture. At the input layer, we pass our original data set and at the output layer, we reconstruct important QOIs that we would like to be represented as best as possible over the low dimensional subspace. This part of the network is called an encoder and this part of the network is called a decoder and hence we called this approach a QOI aware encoder decoder. You can check this paper where we propose this approach and demonstrate its interesting applications in reduced order modeling you will find the link to the PDF in the video description. A one more very important novelty of this approach is that we allow for both projection independent and projection dependent QOIs. What I mean by that is that the projection independent QOIs are ones that remain fixed throughout training, but projection dependent QOIs are variables that get continually reprojected onto the current subspace as the neural network is training. And therefore their definition changes throughout training. The projection operator that defines the subspace can be directly extracted from the encoding layer. <clears throat> Those are simply the weights from the encoding layer W1. They define the new basis to represent the original data set and the projection dependent QOIs. Now projection dependent QOIs especially emerge in reduced order modeling of dynamical systems. One such system describes transport of scalars in a reacting flow. This is a classic partial differential equation that has the form of a convection diffusion with source terms. Eta over here are the low dimensional parameters computed by projecting the original system onto a low dimensional subspace. And this source term S eta is a projection of the full dimensional source term onto the same subspace. 
whenever we use a different projection operator to generate new low dimensional parameters, the definition of S eta changes as well, as it has to be reprojected onto that same subspace. And to run a successful reducer model using this system of transport equations, we need to be able to accurately represent S eta over the projection. Therefore, S eta becomes a very important quantity of interest and ideally the topological quality of our low dimensional parameters should be informed by how S eta is represented over the projection. If we come back to our encoder decoder, this bottleneck layer with only two neurons is where we are computing a two dimensional projection of the input data set. Notice that if we wanted to compute three dimensional projections, we would use three neurons in that bottleneck and so on. Now, how does our transport equation come into play? Well, with the two low dimensional parameters, eta one and eta two, we also have two projected source terms, s eta one and s eta two. We can plug them back at the output layer since we know they will be crucial quantities of interest. And remember that their definition will change throughout training depending on the current weights established in the encoding layer. Now as the neural network is training and as the weights in the encoder change, the topology of the two-dimensional projection changes as well. Notice how this projection becomes gradually more spread out in the two-dimensional coordinate system and any faults that were present there initially get resolved with the training time. Once the training is converged, we can extract the final optimized projection, which will represent all QIs from the output layer as best as possible. Let me show you one example projection generated from this synthetic three-dimensional data set. We will now run training of the QI aware encoder decoder using as a QI the variable which colors that data set. So as the network is training, you can see how changes to the weights from the encoder alter the two-dimensional projection such that the color variable is finally represented uniquely over the entire projection. <laughs> and I will show you one more training example where I'm optimizing a two-dimensional projection of a much higher dimensional data set, but in this case, I also colored the projection by a quantity of interest that is projection dependent. Therefore, you see that the color variable changes as the projection topology is changing. And notice that at the beginning, the projection exhibits a fold in which values of the QI uh, would become non-unique. <clears throat> but at this point, this projection dependent QI becomes uniquely represented over the projection. So why does this approach work? Why does this allow for much better projections compared to what classic PCA can give us? Well, within this QI aware encoder decoder, we've connected two tasks. The projection task, which is handled by the encoder, and the nonlinear reconstruction task, or nonlinear regression task, which is performed by the decoder. And we use a linear activation function in the encoder to allow for linear projections, but we use nonlinear activation functions in the decoder to allow for the most accurate reconstruction of QIs from the subspace. Now, as those two tasks talk to each other during network training uh, through the forward pass and back propagation, any problematic behaviors on a projection, such as non-uniqueness in representing a QOI, immediately propagate as large reconstruction errors. And upon the next iteration, they are corrected by slightly altering the projection operator. As a result, a projection is found where all those problematic behaviors are minimized. I will now show you how you can easily train our QOI aware encoders decoders with PCA fault using the class called QOI aware projection. <clears throat> so first of all, we load our dataset X, whose dimensionality we'd like to reduce. 
we also load an associated date data set S that is a function of the data set X and that we'd like to compute the projection dependent QOIs from. <clears throat> so S could, for example, be the true source terms that we need to reproject onto the current subspace as the network is training. Now we instantiate an object of the QOI aware projection class, and there we can pass all sorts of arguments that define the parameters for training an artificial neural network. But most importantly, we pass the dataset X, the dimensionality of the subspace that we'd like to project X onto, and we specify what the projection independent and the projection dependent QOIs are. So let me stop here for a moment. Let's look back at the decoder output. The projection independent outputs in this case are the first seven variables from the original dataset X. But you could also select those to be any important QOIs, even ones that do not come from the dataset X. The projection dependent outputs will be the low dimensional projection of the associated dataset S. Uh, it has to have the same number of variables as X. And since we're computing 2D projections, there will be two projection dependent QOIs. And remember that those are the QOIs whose definition continually, continually changes as the neural network is training. So let me show you what other arguments you can pass to this QI over projection class. You can select the gradient descent optimizer, let's say Adam. You can specify the decoder architecture and the activation function to be used in the decoding layers. You can specify the initialization of weights in both the encoder and decoder, the type of loss function to use. Uh, typically, this will be the mean squared error loss, the number of epochs to train for, or the random seed that assures that your results will be fully reproducible. Now, I mentioned that you can specify an initialization of the encoding weights, that is the weights that define the projection operator. The interesting thing that you can do is to initialize them to PCA-based weights, that is the matrix of weights in the encoding layer W1 can be initialized to the eigenvectors from PCA. So here's how you can do that. You can import the PCA class from PCA fold and you run PCA on your data set. You can then access just the first two eigenvectors from PCA and simply pass them to the uh, encoder weights in it argument. This way the encoder decoder will start off with a data projection that is the same as its PCA projection. And then as the network is training, this projection will continually change towards an improved one. Once you have an object of the QOI aware projection class, you can always print a summary of this current instance using the dot summary function. This will show you a verbose overview of the architecture, initialization and hyperparameters. And it can be useful for you to double check the architecture of your QOI aware encoder decoder. You can also check if you're using the right activation functions in all the decoding layers. If you're happy with all the parameters, you can run the training by calling the function dot train on the QI aware projection class object. If you've initialized the object with the verbose parameter set to true, you will see some information printed and you will also see the progress bar as the network is training. After training, probably the attribute you're most interested in is the optimized projection operator, that is the weights from the encoding layer. You can access all best weights and biases that correspond to the epoch at which the loss was smallest using this attribute weights and biases best. This will give you a list of NumPy arrays. And if you access just the first two items in that list, those will be the weights W1 and biases B1. Now, you can manually uh, project your original dataset X onto the new basis defined by weights W1 using this expression. And here the weights define the projection operator 
and the bias vector only acts to translate that projection. It does not distort uh, the topology of that projection. With this equation, you can compute the low dimensional parameters eta that define the optimized projection. You can also print the weights and biases using the print weights and biases best function. If you'd like to monitor their values, for example, you can see how much they've changed uh, from the PCA initialization. And finally, there's a function available in the QOI aware projection class that plots the loss function. And you can do a quick inspection of the convergence of your training and of the absolute value of the loss throughout training. This function will compare the loss computed on the training data and the validation data. That's all for today. As always, you can check the documentation of PCA Fold, where you can find more detailed instructions on using the QOI Aware Projection class. In the next video, I will show you another interesting functionality of PCA Fold. See you then.